let's just hold hands. Hello, darling. Hi. <laughs> And it's, it's lovely to be sitting yeah. here with with you. It's so great to sit here with you and oh and, and and to talk about this, to talk about this performance, to talk about this film, to talk about yeah. your time with Joe Wright. Yes. Um, and uh, you know, it's always it, it's such a basic question: How did this project find its way to you? So, it found its way to you. That's a given. <clears throat> but what then happened once it had found its way to you, and how? How did you get your head around playing right. Winston well, Churchill? Winston Churchill. Well, like most most projects that come in, um, most of them I turned down initially, only because I think it's out of I don't know if it's fear, but it's certainly insecurity. Even mm. still, yeah. I'm nearly sixty. Yeah. I've been doing it forty years, and I say to myself, why? The they should get someone else. Yeah. You yeah. know. And it's nearly always happened with the things that have been the most challenging, the most rewarding, mm. and the most successful. Yeah. Yeah. I've and, had the same exact. Right. Yeah. And you could even turn them down more than once and they seem to wash back up on the shore mm. and they won't take no for an answer and then you then you have to sort of collect and you know, think, okay, let me think about this. So you're you're being asked to play. Um, obviously, I have a striking resemblance to Churchill. Clearly. It's obvious, isn't it? I mean, it? you must have been related in a past <laughs> life. <laughs> <laughs> must have been, so, clearly. So I am. Um, <laughs> so this thing came in, and, I, and, and you're asked to play uh, arguably the greatest Briton who ever lived. Yeah. And to, to some, this iconic, famous you know, to us and my generation, certainly. I mean, I was born in 58. The end of the war was really, it wasn't ancient history. Mm. And we were still feeling the effects, the yeah. aftermath of the war. Yeah. In the, the streets where I used to sort of walk to school, you had two houses and a house missing. Yeah. Three houses, two houses missing from yeah. the Blitz. So you, 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 you know, what, we, it, my mother lived, who God bless is still alive, and she's 98 oh. this month. Oh, and um, obviously remembers Churchill. My father was in the Navy, was in the Battle of Okinawa, yeah. and in the Atlantic under Churchill. So, so there's all this, these odd, in a way, connections. But, mm. but do people, this is the thing. Um, so it gave me great pause to think this is ridiculous I don't look anything like him um, it, 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 it's an incredible role yeah it's the role of a lifetime it's like full star for yeah. being offered uh, King Lear but I'm uh, sorry I'm not going I'm not going to do it yeah and and did you feel in the moment of saying sorry I'm not going to do it as well as the utter terror the idea of playing him and the fear that you might fuck it up which we all feel yeah and i get all yes. the time as well yes but aside from that was there a part of you that thought actually i don't want the burden i don't know if i want the burden did that the, occur to you yeah the work yeah the, to carry the work yes. for a, the best part of a year yeah i had to sort of i wasn't just being asked to sort of turn up in a month mm. it, it, it was almost a year of my life, an mm. immersion into this role and to surrender my time and every waking minute mm. to Winston Churchill. Yeah. And I thought, that's what it's going to take. Yeah. It, I can't, you can't just show up and, 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 and you can't wing this. You've really got to do the work. And I just thought it was just mountainous. And, um, and from the point of saying, yes, that you would do mm. it. Did you just start to feel quite sick quite quickly or did you just decide to focus, get on with it, knuckle under? Well, it was, it, it, it was my, um, my, dear, my dear friend, Douglas, and, uh, and, and my wife who said, come on, you're going to stand in Parliament and you're going to say, blood toll, tears and sweat, we should fight them on the, you know, really? You'd, 
And I thought, what's the worst that could happen? Mm. I'd be awful. I'd get over it. We'd move on with our lives. You know, this is not sort of like... Uh, so I said yes, and of course the moment that you step out onto the wire, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you're looking at the drop below it's you, so true. Oh, God, um, and, so true. and and um, and and th and then thus it began. Hitler will not insist on outrageous terms. He will know his own weaknesses. He will be reasonable. When will the lesson be learned? When will the lesson be learned? And did you rehearse? I do want to know that. You, so so mm. there just must have been. I mean, you had Ben Mendelssohn and you had Chris and Scott Thomas. I mean, did Joe Wright, your director, did he get you all around a table? Did you have the oh, sit down than, and read? Did more you have, than around the <coughs> table. Okay, great. God, that's we, nice to We hear, had four it? weeks of rehearsal. Oh, God, wow. With, um, with all the rooms. I don't know. Have you ever worked for the BBC? I don't mean to insult yes, you. Yes, I very much, right, absolutely, right. yes. You yes. know the old days with the BBC where they used to mark out the set the and tape. you would come in a door like that? Yeah. Mm. We did this for Steve you know. Jobs, actually. We did a similar thing on a film Steve Jobs did with Danny Boyle a few yes, years ago. We marked it, taped you, it all out. Were... Well, we taped out the floor. Anyway, so I know. So you did that. Which you were marvellous in. Shush. I want to say Cut it. that bit out. Um, um, <laughs> yes, so we rehearsed with furniture, uh, moving it around and mm. with the actors and it was just a, it was a joy to for once be on a you know you know uh, saying the words out loud mm. not five minutes before you shoot yeah god great because that's you know that's sort of what happens and did you find his voice i mean i'm not talking about his metaphorical voice but did you find his actual voice before you started rehearsing or during? Well, it's the first, it, when I, when it, see, here's the thing. I turned it down, mm -hmm. but of course it all started bubbling. Yeah, you so you, did you know it was gonna come back? I, I had a feeling. Yeah, it's funny that, isn't it? And, I've uh, had that before. Yeah, and then, so I went and listened to a speech, got my little iPhone recorder, mm. you know, went to the landing, because there's a lovely echo up there, you know, on the landing, in the, on the stairwell. Yeah. And I sort of practised a couple of speeches and thought, just trying it on, yeah, like you do. Because you do have to try it out. You do have to try it out to see if you can do it. And, you know, for you and I, I mean, we're so lucky, obviously, but gone are the days of audition. And actually, there's a part of me that misses auditioning, because you, it, it is an opportunity to just feel it out and see get it take it get it get it up off and the page make the mistakes and and and, yeah. and and figure out ways of ways to fix them and think around it and outside of it and find your own way back into it and yeah. uh, that is something that does happen in an audition i believe we are to meet regularly how are you for mondays i shall endeavor to be available on Mondays, four o'clock. I nap at four. So I'm fascinated. We all want the call. I, uh, well, a great many actors, at least, want the call from Woody Allen. Woody wants you to be in his next film. So and that's what? exactly what happened. So it was, um, it was June of last year, and I was very excited about a nice, clear summer. And um, so were my children, and we had lots of great things planned. And my daughter was gearing up to GCSE year, so we thought, mm. okay, let's really get some good fun adventures yeah. in before, you know, she has to sort of knuckle under a bit. And my agent phones and said, Woody Allen wants to offer you the lead in his latest film. <gasps> <laughs> and I just went, <laughs> for fuck's sake, don't be stupid. I said, no, that's not, don't make things up. Please don't make things up because that would really annoy me if you were making that up. She said, not making it up. He's going to phone you. He's oh. going to phone you in a minute. And I'm going, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm literally, I'm sitting on the, I'm sitting on the floor sorting through, you know, my son's school bag. Yeah. And, uh, and she said, no, he's going to phone you in, in five minutes and he, he, he wants to send you the script, but before he does that, he wants to talk to you about the, character, describe the story to you, and tell you why he wants you to play this part. And I'm suddenly really struggling to 
even, you know, form my thoughts, yeah. let alone my words. I'm going, OK, Whew. so so it's just a big adrenaline moment and uh, no time to really think. And then, of course, <clears throat> I thought to myself, OK, Woody Allen is known for being, um, I think, quite eccentric. Yes. and quite potentially demanding and also doesn't like rehearsing with actors. And so I realized that I had all of these things that I'd heard about Woody Allen as a director and a writer, none of which I knew were true, false, upside down, yeah. black, white, pink, gray, no idea. So I thought, okay, just be yourself, just be yourself. Hello? Hello? Hello, is this Kate? Yes, hello, hi, Woody, hello, oh God. And immediately, I'm not being myself at all, and I hate myself, mm, right. and, 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 I'm, and I'm thanking God that I'm not auditioning, because I definitely would have not gotten the job. And um, so he said, you know, I've written this, uh, I've written this movie, and uh, you know, I, 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 you know I, I, I'd love you to read it. You know, you're probably gonna hate it, um, but you know, you know, just you read it, and, and, and you'll see, you know, if you wanna do it, and, and, and you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a great role, like it's, it's a tour de force, and I, I think it could be great for you, and you know, just read it, and you know, if you, if you don't like it, that's fine, and you can just go back to your life and have a probably nicer life if you don't do it, but you know, you may wanna do it, and this kind of goes on, and I'm sort of just laughing my head off thinking, God, this is, this really is real. He's, he's all of the things I thought that right, he would probably right. be. And I'd met him once before, but it was quite a long time ago. And it was brief. And so then a carrier pigeon person arrives at the house with the script. I said, would you like a coffee? Yes, that would be lovely. Sits and waits outside the house with a coffee while, I, you, while right? I sat and I read the script. And I just, you know, Ginny, the character I play in the film, it's, it's a gigantic role not just in terms of the volume of dialogue, but in terms of the personality and the, the heart and the pain and yes. the turmoil and the desperation and the regret and the, it's, and, and the desire and, and the, the you know, broken dreams and hope for chance at love again. And, and I mean, the, thing that, the, the number of things that she was and represented to me was just so, it was so gigantic. It was brilliant. It read like a play, it read fluidly, it zipped by, every character was incredible. These long scenes, yep. I just couldn't get over it. And I thought, wow, this is a great role for someone else to play. <laughs> 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 I thought the same thing. I thought, well, I just, I really can't do that. I mean, I just can't do that. I just can't. And I wasn't gonna work. It was the summer, we'd had all these plans right. and, and, um, and my husband said, what's, what's it like, what's it like? Quickly, let me read it. I'm like, you're not allowed to read it. The la and the lady's outside, you know, she's gonna, <laughs> she's waiting to go, what's it like? And I said, you know, it's such a shame. It's just such a shame because it's, it's completely brilliant, but I'm just gonna have to, I can't do it. I can't do it. Stop looking at me like that. Just don't look at me, don't even look at me. I can't do it. Yeah. I, I'm not gonna do it. Just, so just forget it. This is a $500 watch. But you always wanted this watch. Yes, but it's much too extravagant. You can't afford this. That's my business. And even if you could, it's much too extravagant given... Given what? Given, given what? It's too much to spend on me. You, you shouldn't be getting me jewelry. And then my daughter overhears this conversation. She goes, Mum, get over yourself. Of course you're going to bloody do it. And I thought, oh, oh God. God. Oh, God, she's right. OK, oh, God, oh, God. And the whole summer really became about making myself, um, you know, yes, learning lines. I learned that I did learn pretty much the whole script actually before we even started. But it was more about mentally preparing myself mm. because I wanted to be everything that Woody Allen had, had, had uh, hoped that I would be. Uh, uh, and I wanted to be more and I wanted to be able to surprise him and I wanted to be able to surpass his expectations. But most of all, I wanted to be bulletproof and I wanted to be easy for him. I yep. didn't want to be a burden because I just had a feeling that he's probably the kind of director having done it for as long as he has done now and churned out so many masterpieces. I just thought, you know, he's not going to want to be bothered with actors being neurotic and questioning him and uh, needing things from him. He's seen it all. He's, he's seen done it all. Done it. Yeah. yeah, but also I pride myself actually on really not being like that, not being a needy person. Just show up, you get on, you just do it, yeah. no fuss. Yeah. And and so I'm, that's how I that's how I did it. And I, you know, every out of work actor friend I had who happened to be around that summer, please just please come down and say just a week, just a week. I'll cook lovely food and we'll and we'll just we'll just 
learn the lines. Yeah. Just, 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 I just got to get the lines in. And, uh, and I called in favors, left, right, and center, anyone who was available. And um, yeah, and, and that, was, that was my way, <laughs> that was my way into that Woody is. Allen. It was just mad. It was and you, you must, I must say, and you surpassed his expectations. Oh, God. Well, I hope so. I hope I, so. I have a question for you, though. There's that long take of mm. where you're... Which one? Well, <laughs> oh, God. yes. Uh. There's the one under, well, there's the one under the pier. Mm -hmm. um, but there's the one where... Uh, Timberlake comes and accuses you. Oh yes, at the end, calling the mob. Or, yeah. Yeah. And you're drunk. Yeah. Um, it is. It's some of the. It, it's remarkable. Your uh, your drunk acting is. Uh, <laughs> what, what is there something you do? Oh, God. That, well. I, I mean, Thank presumably you for you admiring my you, drunk. You weren't drunk. You weren't drunk, of course. No, I wasn't no. drunk. I wasn't drunk because years ago, when I was about twenty-two, I had to do a drunk scene in something, and um, and I had a couple of cheeky swift ones beforehand because another actor who should remain nameless for yes. the purposes of this conversation said, I just have a few drinks. And I thought, oh, okay, well, I don't know how to be drunk, you know, on screen. And also, what wasn't and never have really been a very big drinker. And right, so, fine. and so I, uh, I, 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 you know, I, and, I, and I regretted it because it just made me really tired. But the one thing that I did remember is that your body, the way you move your body, you know, you'll push someone on the shoulder and the, you just push them a little bit too hard bit too or you hard, just yeah. kind of, you know, it takes you longer to move your head. It, you know, you don't whip, snap it fast like you would if you were sober. Yeah. Um, but I was very nervous about that scene, actually. more. There were a few that I was very nervous about. There's that scene, the one where my character gives him a po an antique pocket watch as a birthday present. I was very nervous about that scene because it was just brilliantly it's written. And I just thought, God, I'm not going to just but mustn't get this wrong. <clears throat> um, but I went to Woody that morning. And actually, Woody likes to have his actors on set before he gets there in full hair and makeup. So he never sees you as your pers Got real it. person right. in, in right. street clothes, which I completely think is a brilliant idea. So he never saw me without my wig and the costume and all of that. But this one morning, I snuck onto the set and I slightly hid. And all the ADs and things were looking for me. You know, where's Kate? Anyone got eyes on Kate? And I could hear the radios, you know, people were looking for me. And I thought, no, I'm just not. I just have to get Woody before anyone else gets their hands on him. And he came shuffling into the studio in that sweet way that he does. And I went to him and I said, Woody, I really need to talk to you. Oh, my God, is, that, is everything okay? Are you, do, are you sick? Are you, and, me, and me immediately just thought there's some ailment that is going to prevent her from... I yeah. said, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. I just, I really wanted to just ask you to look after me today because I, you do know that you've written an extraordinary scene and it does have undertones of... Blanche Dubois, there's a touch of Sunset Boulevard in here, there's a little Joan Crawford. Yeah. There are lots and lots of ways that I could go with this scene. I just need you to know I'm right. not going in any of those directions. Um, I'm just not. He said, no, you mustn't. Oh, God, do you feel the threat of any of those characters? I said, I don't, actually, I don't. I said, but I just want to be on the same page with you, and I just want you to pull me back if it goes too far. I just want to, I've got to stay on the tightrope, you know, and I must not fall off it. So you can be drunk and you can fall off the tightrope and sometimes it can be quite effective. But this was not a scene in which I was going to be doing that. And I really asked for his support and he gave it. I mean, he was, he yeah. was, he was sort of on me all day and, you know, little ideas back and forth. And he's like, you feeling OK? I think it's I think it's OK. I mean, I think I don't think it's cliched. Oh. I think it's I think we have that, you know, he was That's more than you know, okay. try, try, try this and yeah. maybe do this one. You know, maybe 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 don't move around at all. You know, maybe just see how it feels. You know, keep your hands low. Don't do so. He was and, brilliant. And so he let you do. I mean, how many takes did you do that? Oh, God, I can't time? tell you. We rehearsed it for the whole morning. I do remember that. Right. We rehearsed the whole morning, and that would, that would often happen a lot, actually. You don't rehearse at all before you start shooting. Right. Not at all, which is very disconcerting. But actually, I didn't mind it in the end because we did rehearse. We'd get to work, and we would rehearse until we were ready to shoot it. And sometimes that could be four and a half, five hours. And then you'd break for lunch. Wow. And yeah. Vittorio Storaro, who was our extraordinary yeah. cinematographer, yeah would just make sure he was happy with everything and you'd hit the and ground running you in go, the afternoon. You go. And when you go, you go, you go. Yeah. yeah. So we'd and sometimes do, you know, they would, they would often be 13, 14 minute takes all in one shot, one camera. Um, and we would do it maybe 
you know, never any more than I would say 20 times. And that was at the very outside. But it would always have to be the whole take, you know, because he doesn't stop. You don't cut in. I want to be honest with you, Mickey. I'm married. I'm a married woman. I want to be honest with you, Mickey. I'm a married woman. I'm married, Mickey. I've been a great, a great fan of his movies for so many years, and I don't know what it is. There's something a Woody Allen movie would come out, and in a, and it's great to see it on the big screen, you know, mm. where where you should see it. And I lived in New York uh, for a while, and and it was great to go to the movies mm -hmm. and see a Woody Allen movie with New Yorkers. Yeah. Um, and there's something. It's like being in the company of. A friend, yeah. Like there's a sort of wonderful familiarity to it, where you just well, he loves just... he loves New York so much, and he loves to capture New York. He loves to capture New Yorkers, people going about experiencing life in totally different forms, and so many of them, the hustle and the bustle on the street, and and uh, everyone has a purpose, a direction, or something, a love affair, a romantic moment. There's everyone's yeah. got a New York story and a New York life, and he's. He's just brilliant at capturing that. And who, the, the, vo the voice that you have, the mm. accent, mm. If, it, it's, it's very, very specific. So, yeah, did, so did you work with well, I'm someone? glad you've asked me about that actually, because it did. I, I did actually find that I did find that quite difficult. And again, you know, I could, you know, I could have done that. I, she could have been, you know, I mean, it would have been right. perfectly easy and acceptable, you know, and 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 for the period, if I'd done that, I, but I didn't want to do it because I've heard that before a thousand times over, yeah. done brilliantly by many other people. So I said to Woody, look, I want to come up with something that's a little bit different. He said, well, you know, she's not from Coney Island originally. She's from a broader New York area. She'd wanted to be an actor. Therefore, you know, she was never a very good one, but she would have had some form of training. Diction so, or something. Yeah, yeah, something. So, so have her sound a little different to everyone else. Meanwhile, I'm guessing what everyone else is going to sound like. Um, and and she, but she's been in Coney Island for maybe five or six years, so she would have picked up something. You know, she lives there, she works there, mm -hmm. and and she has a child. Yeah. Um, and so, so I did work with a dialect coach, a lady who I've known for 20 years, actually since Titanic, and we came up with something together. But we did go into, we called it a dialect bunker because it, 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 we, we, we really did. We, we, spent, we spent a week, we actually went away because I just kept finding sort of life at home and cooking meals for children very distracting. We went away mm. and we did. We went into a bunker, pulled the phone out the wall right. and, we, and, we, and we hammered it out for a week. Like, and at the yeah. end of the week, I had this one piece of dialogue that I wanted to record and send to Woody. And I thought, God, am I brave enough to do this? Because he could yeah. just say, it's awful, change it. I thought, well, you know, put yourself out there, girl. And um, there's a little scene where my character is talking to her reflection in a mirror, a little uh, bit like a performance. Yeah. And I recorded that yeah. piece of dialogue for Woody and sent it to him. And I got an email back <clears throat> three days later, may I add. Yes, just three saying, days Very you're nice. sweating. Very the... nice. That's all he said. Very nice. You did a nice job. I thought, OK, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> I sent takes to... Joe. You did the same thing? I would do... So did you work the, on your own or with a coach? I worked on my own. Okay. Um, and was that I, one of the more challenging parts of, of creating him? The, the, the voice and the movement? The movement The of, movement of him. was... Here, here's where... What, what's... Uh, that, all, that really came out of... Um, you know, we close our eyes and we try and remember Churchill. And then I was thinking, am I remembering Churchill? Uh, pictures or maybe the odd piece of footage that I've seen of him. Am I remembering Churchill? Or am I influenced or contaminated by Albert Finney as Churchill or mm. Robert Hardy as Churchill? Well, I was going to ask right? you that, but I thought I'm sure every journalist has asked you that, right. so maybe I wouldn't. But, but <laughs> you know, so you... So what I, what I did... I, and he's played as the sort of, he's a man born in a bad mood. Mm. He's, he's, you know, um, a curmudgeon yeah. with his drink and his cigar and shuffling around. And I went to um, 
apart from the... But he was born uh, in Blenheim Palace as yes, well, wasn't he? Yes, I've seen so, his lock of hair. I've been right. and so seen, was, yeah. So rather than, you, you know, you, still, you get a, a, a sense of the personality of the man from the, from the, from the written words. Mm. I mean, and there's so many biographies that have written about him, but I went to the newsreel footage and what I saw was a man who was energized, um, he looked like a baby. He really did. He had this cherubic face. He had a twinkle in his eye. He had a mm. little smile on his lips like he'd stolen sweeties from the tuck shop. And he was alert and alive and marching ahead of everyone. And they were like chasing behind him, trying to keep up. Mm. And I thought, yeah, that's... That's the man that won the war. You yeah. know, that's because he, ha he seemed to have, and you certainly captured this, my God, so brilliantly. He seemed to have a relentless energy yeah. for a man who was clearly pretty unhealthy. <laughs> unhealthy, I mean, 65. Yeah, 65, which interestingly is not that much older than you are now, and no. yet, and yet he, he looked so much yeah. older, so much older. Let them see your true qualities, your courage. My poor judgment. Your, your lack of vanity. Yeah, my eye and will. Your sense of humour. Ho, ho, ho. Now go. Go? Be... Be what? Be yourself. I did a film in which, about nine years ago, eight, nine years ago, in which I had a lot of facial prosthetics, so I know the pain of how long that it takes in the chair. But... I can imagine it would have been impossible to play him, wouldn't it, without all of that? Oh, it, it was the, it was, it was really one of the reasons I think that that it gave me a moment when I when it first came through. Yeah. Um, people, I, I guess, tend to cast actors who are a little more robust than I am, and who maybe look not like him, but. Could look more like him, him yeah. rather than, you know, someone like me. So that was, of course, that, that, I mean, that was the elephant in the room. Yeah. How are we going to do this? Mm. I'm nearly 60. I am not going to put on 50, 60 pounds to play the man because it's, it would just be ridiculously also, unhealthy. Also, it would have taken you a very long time to put that on. And it would have taken me a long yeah. time. So it, it, it was always going, that was always a thing that we had to discuss yeah. and and I knew someone I knew Kazuhiro Suji who designed the makeup and I said really I, I I'm I'm in I'm on I'm on the train with you Joe uh, but I, this is the guy I want yeah. because I feel that he's the only man on the planet yeah. that can do this yeah. and, and pull and achieve it and pull it off and Joe took his notebook out of his pocket and his pencil and he said, Kazuhiro, how'd you spell it? You know, and we got, and we got going. And I knew Kazu and, um, it, it, you know, it, it, the stars aligned. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. here. He's 25 minutes from my house. It wasn't like amazing. some amazing uh, artist that lived in Finland. Yeah. You know, he was like 25 minutes away from me. He's retired. Wow. From the movie business, and I. But happily so I, came back. No I doubt. had to seduce him and say, "Please, please, please." But come the back. collaboration of creating a yeah. character like that one, because yeah. it does include so many technicians and the director, it's a, it's a, it's a lovely part of our job that I think yeah. we don't get to talk about that often, and actually is an enormous. Um, is an enormous part of, of bringing a character to life truly. You know, often people say, oh, I don't feel I can do it until the costume's gone on. And I completely agree. Oh. Costume, wig, everything. But when you have the prosthetics as well, it becomes, the, it becomes your safety blanket, yeah. doesn't it? And perhaps lunchtime. Lunch. Mondays. Your Majesty. Prime Minister. What has been your most challenging role? Maybe it was this one. What has been your most challenging role? I tell role? you what, the most challenging role was um, George Smiley. Um, uh, ghost of Alec Guinness, mm -hmm. you know, who was for years the face of George Smiley, an actor I deeply 
admire, and um, uh, was remarkably good in the role. Mm -hmm. And 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 you know, people were just happy with him. Yeah, he's George Smiley. Uh, there's no, you have to be a man who is sort of every man, very quiet, really boring in a way, mm -hmm. but make that, but make that exciting. Yeah. It, make it watchable or yeah. interesting by doing really nothing and being dull. Yeah, sometimes the stiller the character, the more challenging it can be, I think. And um, because I had no disguise, mm. I was quite naked except for a pair of glasses, um, I panicked and I got stage fright. Proper stage fright? Bone crushing. Really? Um, oh my God. Yeah, calling the doctor. Oh God, to help. oh my God. Life, my, I, was, I was in pieces. My life was falling apart. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sweat. Um, I can't do it. They're going to have to release me. They're going to oh have to. God. We're going to have to. You, you're going to have to send me home. And they were already shooting the opening in Prague, and I had like a week to go. And I just said, "You've got. They, you, I've got to get on a plane. I've got to go home." I, oh ne I said, Lord. "Look at me. I can't even." I can't even relax in my hotel room. How am I going to walk on a set and remember these lines? Yeah. And the thing, I called a doctor. Oh my God, the things me, we put ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> and he gave me and he gave me a little tablet. And after a few days, it started to calm me down. Oh you know, I got I got the sweats started to go, and I got a bit of perspective on life. And. Um, I got to the set, and as soon as I arrived on the set, I, I, I went, oh, yeah, yeah. I've got oh, this. I, know. I can do yeah. this. I know where I am. <laughs> yes. What was all that craziness about? But, it, but it, I was nearly on an airplane going home. On a stretcher. Yeah, I mean, just leaving town. Yeah, yeah, yeah.